and Gonzaga. To the action, first half, Blake, Steph, lethal. He had 21 points. The Bulldogs will be up by five at the break. Gonzaga up five. Alex Hernandez, he's a thief. Hernandez can finish 10 points, three of three from the field. Bulldogs up seven, but Gonzaga was up four when the ball would end up in the hands of Casey Calvary. 14 points for him. Gonzaga lead six. Santa Clara coming back with under a minute to play. Brian Jones, BJ, 18 points. Santa Clara down three. Next possession, it's Kyle Bailey. That's sweet. Five and nine from three-point range. He had 15 points. Santa Clara down one. Now, Gonzaga would make two free throws. They'd be up three. One last chance for Santa Clara to tie it. Jamie Holmes, uh-uh. So Santa Clara fails in its bid to get into the NCAA tournament for the first time since 96. Gonzaga wins for the 18th time in 19 games, becoming the first school to win three straight West Coast Conference tournaments. The Bulldogs head to the NCAA tournament, where they've won five games over the previous two seasons. Championship game of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, Indiana State against Bradley. Charlie Steiner's alma mater. Matt Wren. Let's flash back to 1979. The only time ISU has won the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, yeah, when that guy, the legend, 1979, Larry Bird was there. Final seconds now of the first half. Keelan, block. Block with 15 points, 21 in the game. Bradley down nine. Eddie Cage. Cage, he's got the ball without the chain, a career high 20 points. Later in the second, ISU too tough. Michael Menser taking Philip Gilbert off the dribble. Menser at 15. Menser named the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament MVP. ISU wins. But the celebration begin as Indiana State winning its first Missouri Valley Conference Tournament since 79. The year Larry Bird's team reached the NCAA final. Sycamores in the uh, tournament for the second straight season. History lesson on Indiana State from Things are going much better for Rulin these days. The coach of Iona, his alma mater, trying to get to the NCAA tourney for the second straight year. A win over Canisius in the MAC final will do the trick. And here we go, second half, Canisius down one. Clive Bentick driving coast to coast, up and good. Canisius up one. Six and a half minutes left, Iona's up three. Diary Wilson's got the basketball, falling down. Ball here, ball there, off the glass. Iona up five. That's the score, I own up five, still second half. Nakia Miller working the baseline. Spinning, hitting the jumper. Miller, 24 points, 15 boards. Now it's Masio Wolford, nice pass to Phil Grant for the lay-in, and Iona's up 63-55. Iona goes on to win the conference title. They get it done again. 74-67 is the final. The second straight MAC title for Iona. It's the first time any MAC team has done that since LaSalle won three straight from 1988 to 1990. Iona going to its third NCAA tourney in the last four years. The Colonial Athletic Association final. UNC Wilmington, George Mason. Eric Herring bombs away for three. George Mason up one. It's only 34-33 final seconds. UNC Wilmington down two. Watch what happens here. Eventually, the basketball is going to come to Ed, Will, Ed Williams right there. Did he get it off in time or not? George Mason says, wave it off, wave it off, wave it off. It's no good. It's no good. They said it wasn't any good. Watch it again. And they got the call right. They went to, to the video replay. Watch as Williams clearly frees it. Does not get the ball off in time. The buzzer going off. And George Mason able to hold on to win 35-33. These 68 combined points, the fewest ever in a CAA tournament game. George Mason going to the NCAA tourney for the second time. Northeastern Conference, St. Francis against Monmouth win the first half. St. Francis' is Jason Morgan with the steal and the lay-in. St. Francis goes up by as many as 20. But Monmouth coming back second half. Steve Rich Moen shooting. Getting his own rebound. Up and good and a foul. Part of a 17-zip run. Mammoth down just three. They're down now by two. Jerry Crosby got the three, and Mammoth has come all the way back. They're up one. St. Francis down three. Eight seconds to go. Steve Howard for the tie. No good. Will he get another chance? Yes. Can he hit it? No. So Monmouth comes all the way back to win 67-64, their first NEC championship 
since 1996. Bridge Moen, 18, or I should say 16 points and eight rebounds. Valpo in the semis to play Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. That's I-U-P-U-I for short. Dicey. Valpo's right as graphs, a big game. Back-to-back -back blocks on the defensive end. He had four blocks in the game. Then on the offensive end for two. Valpo up by three at the half. Second half, Valpo up six. Open underneath for two more. And it's Graffs again on the receiving end as Valpo takes an eight-point lead. And then Graffs does it himself. He had 19 points. And they're on to the tournament final. The final score 90 or 65 to 54 as Valpo reaches its seventh straight tourney final, winning for the 13th time in 14 games overall. IUPUI. Held to just 35% shooting. Too long. Yes. The other semi Southern Utah Oral Roberts, Frederick House with the steal. And ends up on the receiving end. Nifty pass as House lays it in. Second half, Southern Utah up by eight. More House. He misses the turnaround, but Chris Wallen not there, but House is there. He had 25 points and four steals. Later, Southern Utah up 11. They're on the break. House with the slam. Southern Utah wins it 73-62. Again, House at 25. Southern Utah will play Valpo for the title. South Alabama, Arkansas State. Ravante Dantzler to Henry Williams. The Jaguars go up by 12. Later in the second, South Alabama up by 12. South Alabama's on the break. Virgil Stanisky gets it to the lay-in. Now a 14-point game. Still in the second, the lead now 18. Brett Gravitt driving the baseline for the lay-in, capping a nine-zip run. South Alabama winning at 76-53. They win for the seventh time in eight games and reach its fourth Sun Belt tourney final in five years. Gravitt, 14 points, four assists. Western Kentucky, Louisiana Lafayette, the other semi. Anthony Johnson, the emphatic slam. Lafayette by three. Under a minute left in regulation, we got ourselves a tie basketball game. Nashawn McPherson for three. That's good. Western Kentucky up three. Next possession to Lafayette. The pass stolen. Three main rolls. Easy lay-in. Ball game. Western Kentucky holding Lafayette to just 37% shooting in the first half and winning 82-75. Chris Marcus scored 33 points. Anyway, the Ohio Bobcats opened up with the bottom feeders of the East Division, the 4-23 Buffalo Bulls. They stink, but Eastern Michigan stinks worse, so the Bulls sneak in through the back door. Then Ohio promptly uh, kicked them out the front. Here we go. Bobcats beat Buffalo twice already this season. Three times a charm, I do believe. Steve Esterkamp to Brandon Hunter. He was a workman all night long, switching hands in the paint. Bobcats up seven. Ohio working it from the outside, too. Esterkamp keeping it. Trey Magnifi, 10-point Bobcat lead. The Bulls sticking around, though. Jason Robinson outside to Damian Foster. Lovely. That cut the lead to four, but Ohio led 49-39 at the break. Ohio pulled away the second. Patrick Flo Mo. Check this out. And get that shot out of here. Dustin Ford picking it up the other way. Kind of cherry picking, but they'll count it. Ohio up 16. Flomo, four blocks in the game. Brandon Hunter still working. Hot hand. Got to put a hand in his face. Uh, he almost dunked on two fools. He had 29 points in the game. Ohio never trailed. Check out Flomo working the board, putting it back. Ohio wins huge. Final says the Bobcats are moving on to the gun. Brandon Hunter leading the way with 29, but he wasn't just jacking it up either. He went 8 for 10 from the floor, 13 to 15 from the charity strike. Ohio was just on point all game long, 58% from the floor, 50% from three-point land, and 82% from the charity strike. They're now 18 and 10. Now Eastern with just three wins on the year. That's not good. Earlier was a tight game. The Eagles, C.J. Grantham, a nice crossover, and the land. EMU up 21-19, but here come the Rockets. A little bit of a miss right here. A little melee trying to find the basketball. Great step in. He does. They're just padding the stats. 28-25 <laughs> Toledo at the break. Second half. Now the Eagles. Wow, look at that. My gosh. Ryan Prillman in the tip dunk, but that's really the best that EMU had to offer the rest of the way. It was all Toledo. Take a look at this. Nick Moore hitting the three. Part of an 18-2 run. The Rockets pulling away. 
Toledo's lead would extend to 18. And a little bit of a loose ball is corralled. Rob Colors. Colors. Colors finding it. What's his name? That, uh, Rob Colors. Oh, okay. It's actually from a movie. And that's really going to be all she wrote. Toledo, they win by 24, 67, 43 is the final. The You've never heard of Wrightus Graphs, the player they're calling the Sean Bradley of the Midcon? Okay, so that doesn't make your earth move. But Graphs is coming off back-to-back -back doubles, but all season long he has struggled against Southern Utah. Fred House grabbing the rebound. He had five of those, and then he had 24 points. Good follow. Southern Utah, 23-15. Second half, Valpo would come back with the three. Lubos Barton responding to a good visual. Barton had 22 points. 11 seconds left, Valpo down one. Southern Utah's Fred House. Making things happen. Impact player the steal, and he's fouled. House hits two free throws. Five seconds left. Valpo needs a three to tie. Dwayne Totley to Lubos Barton. No. Southern Utah shocks Valpo, gaining its first NCAA tournament bid. Said Coach Bill Evans, it was a great game. I can't dance, but I'll go anyway. Graphs, 10 points, 9 boards in the loss for Valpo. Valpo fails in its bid to join Kentucky and North Carolina A&T as the only schools in NCAA Division I history to win seven straight conference tournaments. South Alabama's fourth trip in five years to the Sun Belt title game, battling Western Kentucky. Renardo Curry got the ball without the chain, 11 points for him. Jags making a charge down two. Virgil, Stanisco, finding Demetrius, Williams, eight points for Williams, we're tied. Jags down two then, Emmett Thomas. Thomas, what he's got not available in stores, 13 for him, Jags up one, but the Hilltoppers respond. D-Rob was simply lethal from there. Western Kentucky, yep, they're winners. The Hilltoppers coming off five straight losing seasons, earning their first NCAA tournament bid since 1995. Chris Marcus named tournament MVP. South Alabama just four of 20 from three-point range and six of 12 from the line. The MCC title game, Butler, Detroit, battling Perry Watson, talking. The Bulldogs fired up. Brandon Miller, Miller, sharing. Relon, Hange says, I'm built for this. Butler up two. They led by 10 at the break. Detroit trails by 12. Willie Green attacking. Green going up. Joel Cornett. Oh. Take another look. Joel Cornett cleaning up for the cleaning lady. Hey, dog, is Butler going to the dance? Wink once for yes. Yeah. Butler holds on and wins, earning its fourth trip to the NCAA tournament in five years. The Bulldogs will come into the dance with an eight-game win streak. Their 23 victories. Back to the tournament stuff. Princeton, Penn for the Ivy League crown. Nate Walt, backdoor, Andre Logan. Princeton up five. Next Princeton possession. Ah, uh, they are backdoor. When you think Princeton, you think backdoor. Walton again to Logan. Princeton upset, don't you, Trent? You know it's coming. Right, well, nobody seems to be able to stop it. Walton, nice move. Princeton wins. Walton had nine points, and then the drenching of John Thompson the third, and yes, he's the son of that John Thompson. Congratulations, Princeton. The Tigers heading to the NCAA tournament for the first time. ...have lost their last three Big East tournament games. First half, Gary Buchanan drains the baseline three for Noma. Wildcats up by nine. West Virginia possession, not for long. Derek Snowden stealing to Buchanan. He had the first ten points, or ten points in the first. Nova up by ten at the break. Second half, West Virginia down seven. Calvin Bowman loses the ball and gets it back. Bowman with 12. And then here come the Mountaineers one more time. Lionel Armstead, oh, float me home. Part of the 27-12 West Virginia run. They pull within three, but then Dickie V. Michael Bradley time. Yes, sir, Michael Bradley took over. Buchanan on the inside, and Mike, he's going to find Mr. Bradley, baby. And he knows how to finalize. There he is, taking it to the goal. Gets fouled, and we'll get the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And then we watch as we see Mr. Bradley now Coming up with an offensive rebound. Here he is right now attacking the glass. Michael Bradley aggressive on the glass. I'll tell you, he was sensational with 19 and 9. Now we're going to take a look at Mr. Bradley with a great pass to the inside. It ends up with Sales with the jam. And Villanova marching on, Mr. Wingo. As predicted, Dickie V one more time. Reggie Bryant, nice pass to Bradley underneath who throws it in reverse. And Nova, as you say, goes on to win. 82-71, Villanova almost blows an 18-point lead, but they hang on for a victory that could go a long way into getting them in the NCAAs. Mountaineers have now lost their opening game in the last four Big East tournaments and appear NIT bound. What about the second game this afternoon? Seton Hall at St. John's. Omar Cook and the Johnnies squeezing into the Big East tourney. 
Samuel D'Alembert block and then Dickie V we got more blocks. I'll tell you Samuel D'Alembert was unbelievable. Mr. the glove. I didn't want to see him on the floor. He had seven rejections. He says don't bring it in here baby. On the offensive end Marcus Tony can't hit and then Eddie Griffin clean up on aisle five for the slam. Red Storm down eight in the final seconds of the first half and Glover this time open gets the three beats the buzzer he had 24 the Johnnies though down five at the break second half storm on the break Sharif Fordham the layup Eddie Griffin says not today on the other end Darius Lane drives finds Griffin and this time Griffin putting it in Hall goes up 50 41 Griffin 15 and five blocks and Dickie V St. John's fighting back so here comes Glover to the go he's gonna go to bed tonight dreaming of Mr. Diane Bear <laughs> there goes Dallin Bear one more time Sam the Magnificent with seven rejections a human eraser 10 points as well as Seton Hall wins 78 66 the Reds Actual pictures to Paul in South Florida. First half to Paul by 11. Bobby Simmons three. Part of the 20 to four run by the Blue Demons. They led by six at the break. But here come the Bulls. BB Walden, you're looking at two of his 22. South Florida takes a one point lead. Later, Jimmy Baxter. He's a freshman, but he's precocious. A three. Part of a 14 2 run for South Florida. They go up by 10. And then Altron Jackson. Altron all the time. He had 20 all in the second half. South Florida goes on to win 63-59. Win number 18 for the Bulls is the fifth straight loss for the Blue Demons. Next up for South Florida, number three, Charlotte. Tomorrow, Stats said this was an even close game. Each team shot 38%. Also in Louisville, Houston and the Billikens under Lorenzo Romar. They won the tournament last year, got into the NCAAs. First half, Jason Edwin drives, kicks it out to Maurice Jeffers. He had nine first half points. Billikens by five at the break. Second half, here come the Bills. Josh Fisher to Edwin. Who knocks down another three. He had 14. Bills by 12. Later, second half. Bills still by 12. Je it's all about Maurice Jeffers. He had 20. Billigans by 14. They go on to win 78 to 65. St. Louis. A 30-year coaching career with the Cardinals winding down in 40-minute increments. Beat Alabama Birmingham in round one of the Conference USA Tournament. Put off retirement for another day, another game. Another 40 minutes. Scrum and the Cards hosting the conference tournament. They were actually the visitors, though, because they were a lower seed, and Denny actually went to the wrong bench. Finally got it all straightened around. Shot Brooks knocking down the three. We're tied at 17. Brooks had 21 points. Seven seconds left in the half. UAB up one. Sydney Ball having one. Three ball. UAB up 27, 23 at intermission. Ball finished with nine points. Second half belongs to the Blazers of UAB. P.J. Arnold off the inbounds, good for three, part of a 9-1 run. And with a minute to go, UAB up 11. Gonna beat the press. Eric Batchelor. Batchelor finishes. That's a dunk worth two. UAB wins at 74-61. Denny Crum congratulated by UAB coach Murray Bartow. And then a goodbye to the fans. Blazers win at Freedom Hall for the second time in nine days. Advanced to play top seed Cincinnati. Crum. Ends his career with 675 wins, 373 of them at home. 295 losses, his 695 win percentage ranks 14th all-time. Crum said, quote, it's been a 30-year love affair. Then he looked to the future of the program he helped build. I just hope that uh, we can all unite together and get behind uh, whoever Tom decides to pick for this job and, and give him all the support we can so that everybody... Uh, could enjoy a lot more years of good Louisville basketball. I think that's what that's what we all want, and uh, uh, that's certainly what I want. Crum may not be headed to the dance this season or ever again, but he is still royalty. In the mind of Connecticut coach Jim Calhoun, as the Huskies prepared to face 14th-ranked Syracuse in the first round of the AT&T Big East Tournament, said Calhoun, it's a challenge and an opportunity as opposed to an obstacle. This would give us another quality win. That would bring the total to five and 20 wins overall. It's our Sports Center showcase, you know. Coach Calhoun and UConn on the proverbial a bubble needing a win to improve their tournament standing. Could they get off the bubble or would it first? He, no. Was that Reggie Miller's gum? Preston Shumpert. He scored 34 against UConn last month. He had 21 in the first half, which made Jim Calhoun angry. He also got angry. He got a technical for arguing a foul. And then after some more yelling, uh, Jim Burr, the ref, pokes Calhoun, telling him to stand back. Deshaun Williams sends it up for Damon Brown. Syracuse shot 56% from the field in that first half. Cues up nine. Shumpert. What's he's got? He is unbelievable. He had four three-pointers, John. Syracuse up 15. Damone Brown says, I'm built for this. He had 18 points. Syracuse pulling away. Shumpert 
target practice. He had 31 points. That would mean he had 65 in two games against UConn. And the bubble? First. I think that is a Reggie Miller's gum. Anyway, Syracuse wins. Win number 598 for Jim Beheim. Miami. There's Pitt and New York native Ricardo Greer. Never won at the Garden. Jerron Brown feeding Greer. Pitt up 15. They led by 11 at the half. Panthers were up four, though, in the second half. Greer. 27 points. Pittsburgh was up seven. Less than 30 seconds left in the second half. Pitt. Fast break. Julius Page. That was incredible. Pitt up 10. Take another look. He's got some serious hops. And he's only 6'3", because I know you were wondering that. <laughs> Greer gets his first victory at the Garden. Congratulations. The key to Pittsburgh's decisive win, Panthers. Justin Amick, pick in the pocket of Cordell Henry. Amick the other way. He's not perfect. Brandon Brown, put back. Right there. 17.7 boards for Brandon Brown. Second half to lane down three. Brandon Spann misses the J. Brown is there. Another offensive board. And one. We're tied with that free throw. Olama, Namaka, tough bucket. Marquette hangs on for the 72-67 win. No question. In other Conference USA first-round action, South Florida beats DePaul. Phoebe Walden tossed in 20.